Through the blinds closed, we don't need no light, no. It's a sign, it's a sense, to guide us. Fingertips miss, second time I charm, no. Bodies moving, dancing in the way that you touch me. Welcome back to the Sevo Show. We have a uh, returning guest, but technically he's on for the first time because the last time we recorded it, we left it too long and the files went missing somehow. Yeah, we lost that. But um, it's good to be here because, uh, yeah, Sam McGovern, a homegrown local boy. What's up, man? Has just released yeah. a song called... Hotel rooms. Got it right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a long time coming. I knew about it, it ages has, ago, man. but it's it's live. Oh, it's, How are you feeling so about good. it? It's like yeah, it's really as we said, we've done this before. It's super funny, deja vu. Yeah. But it feels good because there's so much to talk about. I think from both of us, we've been busy. Yeah. So um, yeah, the new song's out. Uh, it was weird because last time when we were chatting, I had so much I wanted to do, but I couldn't do it yet. So. Mm. Yeah, it's out. It feels so good. Just so much momentum. The snowball's rolling now. I can't stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to the start quickly to mm -hmm. the so the audience learns about you. Um, let's let's talk about how you got started because this yeah. show is about anyone who wants to be a creator. Yeah. 100%. Whether it's music, video, art, uh, on a piece of paper yeah. or with a camera. You've chosen the uh, the musical route. The musical route, which also entails everything else. Yeah. To, oh, um, yeah. It's the best life. Um, I mean, it's it's very much up and down. And the height, the highs and the lows are so amplified. I'm sure you know um, you get a win and it feels like it's, it's the best thing ever. Um, and it's hard to find people to relate to these wins too sometimes because they're so – they are alienated from, I guess – I'm um, a nine to five, but um, it's the cool, it's a good life. It's really good. Uh, you asked how I got into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like what, what what age did you pick up a guitar? Early enough for me not to remember how it felt. It was kind of like I mean you're you're handy with your 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 camera gear, right? Yeah. And you're handy with your socials and and all that. I'm handy with my guitar now and my music, but I'm sure you can relate. You know, the first time you picked up a camera or you know, that software, I think that's probably a special memory for two, you too, like that first moment, you're handling it and you don't really know how to use it and it's so stranger to you and you know you'll never get that feeling back again because we're so useful with these objects now. I, I think, yeah, I was about five years old and I got given a guitar. I always get goosebumps when I think about this little classical Yamaha and I didn't know what to do. My fingers were just... I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What 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 was that for you? Uh, I mean, when I first picked up the camera, um, I don't remember the first time I picked up a no. camera, no. but I remember moments throughout my childhood where I had a camera mm. nearby. I just want to play with it. I just like, yep. I want to like. What was that? Do you have the first video you made? Um, I remember one video that I made. We were just mucking around. We were at, down at Neil Hawkins Reserve mm -hmm. in Joondalup. Okay. And my parents had this Sony, yeah, like the very one of the first Alpha cameras. And what's uh, Alpha? What do you it's mean like by that? it's just like a model name. Okay, Alpha Sony Alpha. Was there a beta? Uh, no, there's no oh. beta with Sony. That's Canon. Okay. Um, so <laughs> yeah, um, I remember we went down and this, this this park had birds and stuff, and they they come down and you, you had the seeds and they'd sit on your hand and that was fun. And, uh, so and did I had that the back camera. then. Yeah, I, I don't. I've never seen. I don't see that happening anymore. Yeah, even kangaroos, they don't come up to you anymore. I feel like they're scared of us. Yeah, it's just it's just something about that park. Yeah. But I was obsessed with taking the photos of the birds, and I remember one. Uh, this camera had like a a, a dual function. Right. You can film it with it as well. And back then, it was like oh, two megapixels, and that was a lot. Damn. And I remember like filming it, and I remember I remember filming my sister. She was probably like two years old or something. Mm. She was crying because we had to go home. And I remember filming walking behind her as she's like while she was crying. While she was crying, that's sucking. such a that's such a little boy thing. Yeah, to do, yeah. yeah. Oh. But uh, I remember when I first like started getting back into it again when um, when I was in my mid mid twenties because I mm. got injured from footy. Okay. And I was like, well, I can't do anything else. Let's, let's pick up the camera properly. Yeah, I think that was similar to me too. Like yeah. I kind of, I think it takes a moment where you had a crossroads to yeah. really decide, 
And that was for me too. I, I guess I had to go to uni. <clears throat> I see you making a lot of content like for like people in school and, uh, you know, you know how to navigate through. I saw year 10, you said something yeah. recently. And I feel like, yeah, there's for advice for people, you know, going to uni too. Um, that that year off before uni, if you take it, it can change things. Like, oh, I get, I actually, I'm shivering right now. Perspective. Oh, dude. Like, so what was that year like for you? I moved to Margaret River because I was obsessed with trying to be a pro surfer. <laughs> I was so obsessed. And I, look, I had moments where I thought it could be possible. But look, that was like a bit of a pipe dream. I don't think anything in life is ever impossible. If I stuck at it, I, I mean, I can do anything I want in life. Absolutely. I can, I could be, oh, I sh oh, if there was a bell to stop myself from saying something, I probably would have rung it then because I know... You, you like basketball, hey? Yeah. I was going to say I could be a pro basketballer if I wanted to. I, I'm just, what I'm trying to say though is that anything's possible. You just got to set your mind to it yeah. and just strive and do the right steps. And I just came at a crossroads where I think uni was fast approaching. I had enrolled in the course. What course was that? Uh, I can't even remember. I think, I think it was sports science, but I tell people sports psychology to try and seem cooler. Yeah. But it was sports science. Yeah. yeah. So why why did you like feel the need to enroll in uni? I think it was just society's outlook on like life, especially the school I went to. It was private. Went to a private school. Did your parents force you to do it? Nah. They didn't. Mum and dad have been super chill with that. I'm so grateful for that. That is very lucky. They have been really cool, man. Um, but then I I found Whopper, and that for me that's a perf. That's a perfect thing. I found Whopper and that for me kind of... I did go to uni, but I only lasted one semester. Human bio, that stopped me up. I didn't know what was going on. I failed that. And I pulled out and I... But I rediscovered the guitar because I actually did hang it up. I did hang it up when I was about... Although I played from about 6 till 18, I did hang it up kind of like year 11, year 12 because there was so much pressure from your peers. You know that age where you feel like you've got to be cool? And you feel like judgment from your peers and you just don't want none of that. That's a load of yeah. beep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I wish I realized that earlier, you know, that like if they don't care about you, why do you care about their opinion, you know? Yeah. So Everyone's that, got their own. Oh, man. Everybody's got their own opinion. I've, I've come to like, I think being subject to a lot of hate online um, from what I do sometimes like, oh, the love outweighs everything entirely, but with everything comes all perspectives. But from seeing that, like, it makes me realize that, like, everybody's got an opinion. They're entitled to it. doesn't necessarily mean you're a guru for it, but that's okay. You don't have to hate on them too. So, yeah. But uh, it's important just to do what you love. And, yeah, I'm, I wish I didn't push that aside in the music. But, yeah, I've rediscovered the love from my favorite artist, John Mayer. I found an album of his... Chucked it on in the car on a CD and just drove home from Margs to uh, my hometown for two and a half hours, just jamming out to the CD. Found my guitar, opened the case from when I was 12 and just never put it down since. I took it back to Margs and I stayed in that room for six hours a day for about three months just playing guitar until like I had somewhat a level of mastery again. Well, not mastery, but some level of like understanding again because I forgot everything. Yep. And then I discovered Whopper and that was like, that was like, all right, this could actually be a career. I didn't mm. believe that was possible. I feel like you see, you know, all these big artists, Ed Sheeran, uh, you Chris know, Martin. John Mayer, Chris Martin, yeah, all these guys and you just see them for what they are and mm. you don't see the journey before that. And there's a road before it and, you know, there is, it's possible. So, yeah. And you're documenting it, which is really cool. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's everything we do. And even today, yeah. I was so excited driving here because I think these are like time capsules for us. You yes, know? exactly. Like it doesn't matter what happens when you upload it. It doesn't matter who sees this stuff. Yeah. We look like back 10 years from 10 now. 10 years from now, this could have like 5 million views. We never know. Yeah. That's, that's why I make them. It's like, yeah. if it does it or it doesn't, it's there and like... Whether you have kids or not, 100%. or you re reflect back, like one of my favorite guys um, influences on me is Matthew McConaughey. 
You McConaughey. Know? All right, all oh, right. Oh, yeah. All right. Is he an actor? Yeah. Oh, he's had some deep speeches. This guy. That touches legit. me, yeah. He wrote a book called Green Lights. All right. And I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend Green Lights. reading I've, it, mm-hmm. but listening to him narrate it is just even oh. better. He's such a great storyteller. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I remember just, he, he said he likes journaling, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I journal, I journal mostly. Yeah. I used to journal every day. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I don't really have the time to write. I tried to. Yeah. But my expression is digital or, or visual. Yeah. So I document and journal through the podcast or through my random videos I have in my head. Yeah. So worst case scenario, I put it out there. I'm not doing matter. it to yeah. go viral. I'm doing it to look back at. You, you don't want to go viral too. Actually, like what I've realized, it's cool to have moments of virality it's cool that you need to experience i reckon you need to experience going viral that changed a lot but um consistency is more important absolutely and and that's you know, what you're doing yeah. you, you get your moments of virality like i remember your instagram blew up oh, probably bro. a month or two after i um stumbled past you yeah. busking at the murray street yeah Ball. yeah and it was because of that uh you were singing to strangers. i remember that yeah, yeah that was that was two years ago now whoa yeah yeah no that was crazy um that that this past year actually this past year and a half has actually been really tough like because of that i think i've got i've learned so much i feel like my mental age is like 40 now (laughs) because of like the stuff i've experienced like man this past year like honestly i've i could put it on a list like i've i went to tom cruise's 50th birthday party like the some of the red carpet events i went to in sydney were crazy um i've literally become friends with I've met and befriended mostly all my idols, except for John Mayer, except for John Mayer. Soon. (laughs) Soon. Um, Which is insane. Like, they're the highs, right? And some of the shows I've played and the connections I've made and the people I've met and the things I've done because of that back two years ago is insane. But there's so many downsides to it. And I think that's a sacrifice you make in this industry. Like, um, yeah, it's. I feel like this year for me, and that's probably why I didn't release music when we had our last chat was just kind of clearing out the clutter of the room. You know, you've just thrown a big party in your house and you're just clearing up all the red cups and, and all the Smirnoff bottles and the cruises and like you're just clearing the house up and like you had a huge party. It was amazing. The whole street knew about it, but it's like from there to there. And I dealt with that and that was pretty tough. Um, yeah, but I'm back now and it feels, it feels good. So how do you deal – what was it like in the moment when the party was over and you're cleaning the, the house mentally? What got you out of that feeling? Uh, I feel like I only just came out of it maybe four weeks ago, to be honest. And how long did that last? A whole year, man. Like I, I wouldn't say I was like depressed – but I wasn't like stable, like with my happiness. And it, it took me writing it down and like just writing one certain song. And there was just like a release of everything. Yeah. And then I was like, whoa, it was like this ghost had just left me, honestly. Because yeah. um, there's all these feelings you just don't know how to explain. Um, and that's what I do, music. At the end of the day, everything that I do, like these videos, everything, it's because of my music. And I let it out with my music. So I wrote a song and it felt so nice. And is that the hotel room? No, 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 no. no. Way. That's about, that's about, that's about some, that's about a girl, man. <laughs> it's about so heart. what about the song that you yeah. wrote that let the ghost escape? Yeah, yeah. That was like, kind of like almost going back to my roots. I was a bit folky. It was nice. It was called World of Worry. I don't know when I'll release that, but um, one I'm e- day. I'm excited about it's, that one. It's, it's, uh, oh, it's like really Hotel s- Rooms, amazing. I, I actually had to, like, I called up my producer the next day and I was like, dude, I need to come in the studio ASAP. I need to record this because this is where I'm at right now. And I want my vocals to sit exactly how I feel. And I went in there and we recorded it and it was really special. <laughs> See, this it's, is this is this is the moment that people come back to and yeah, watch yeah. and go. That's yeah, yeah. that's yeah. when Seb I don't know. said to him. I don't know when we're gonna release that. But to to post it or to yeah, but no, nah, man. It was like I'm sure you like. I feel like that's why people like us relate sometimes. Like we we know life is fast with what we do and like some of the 
like there's so many cool moments. Like I remember you told me you went over to Queensland recently. Yeah. You, you had a campaign and I, that's freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, it was tough dealing with kind of some of the things I went through. I feel like I realized that there's a, this industry is very fickle with industry. I had everybody wanting to work with me at one point. I was getting flown over to places and holy moly. I recently went, yeah, we recently went to London to do some work and, but um, there's a lot of fickleness with certain stuff and, and it's like, I feel like, I don't know, I was just trying to chase, I kept trying to chase the monster, trying to catch up to it when it had already left and I had to settle with what I was left with and um, I'm, with, I'm with that now, but it's like from there to there, oh, that's crazy and that's why I've realized consistency is more important than virality. Like you want to build up like brick by brick, you know. I feel like a good example is, you know, when you go to Fremantle, all the beautiful buildings, that was brick by brick. Yeah. They are, be- they are timeless, man. That's what we want. But these days, it's like construction. Bang. It's like building up, concrete slab, done. How fast can we do it? People don't like those buildings as much. No. No, I don't no, want to. They, they I, don't, don't have wanna, flavor. I don't want to build that. I want to build like what I'm out for now is longevity. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what I'm here for. So. It's important that you said that because a lot of creators miss that. Yeah. Miss that uh, initially, mm. and then by the time they realise that they're burnt out or they don't have the energy to to go again. Oh, dude, and I I was right close to the brink of like burning mm. that candle out. Even my friends would hear it. They'd be on the phone. They're like, "Sam, are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, man, I'm I'm all good." And like I had the David Goggins mindset. Yeah. Do you know David? Yeah. yeah. I I love that man. Uh, that is probably the reason why I managed to get things lift on, lifted off because I had this mindset of I'm just going to go. But there's also like we're not in the fitness industry. Like we're, we're, it's a creative mind too. So I need to let that mind kind of You can't its turn it on. Nah. You can't. And, like, and that's the, the struggle I have with creating. Mm. I don't want to create for other people as much as I want to create for myself because when I create for myself, I'm like, I've got an idea. Yeah. That's just been inspired by something yeah. random. And I want to drop everything and make it then and there. Okay. But I haven't posted a TikTok in almost a week. On your on your own one. Yeah, my Instagram has fallen off and like the reason is I'm busy helping other people. But then yeah. they it's expect balance, it man. because I'm helping them, they're going to go viral and, and build their profile just like I did. That it took me five years to do it. Yeah. And I I'm, feel like yeah. It's I feel like I'm wasting my creativity on someone else that doesn't care as much as I care about myself. Yeah. Well that for one, the business needs to like kind of realize that it's cool to have a, a a bit of a launch pad from you helping out. Yeah. But just as you said it yourself, you want to create stuff for yourself and that's when your stuff goes best when you do it you. you mm. It's authenticity. You know, I tried to build a team behind what I do what I did and I realized when I focused too much on other people, it just, it just lost it. Yeah. 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 You kind of got to delegate the simple stuff. Yeah. And then Important. keep the stuff that you like doing the most. Like I don't mind filming, actually filming other people's mm. stuff. But when I don't believe them about what they're saying, I'm like, even if they're telling the truth and even if they have a good product or service, I'm like, why do you, why are you really in this business? Why do you really want to be a dentist or a real estate agent, you know? And they've got experience. Uh-huh. They've got all these stories. But then sometimes I'm just like, where's the passion? Yeah, man. Bring the passion out. That's what I kind of hope to do with what I'm doing is like, yeah. people need to do what they're passionate about. Yeah. You know, I feel like it doesn't matter what you're passionate about. If you're doing what you're passionate about, you're, you're living, you know, because otherwise you get caught in that like, you yeah. become a zombie, you know. What about the transition from passion to profession? Sometimes it gets grey. You move from passion yeah. to profession, which means you get paid oh, for dude. it. Dude. Yeah, but yeah. Do you feel do you feel the passions it's like it's like a curve almost uh-huh. where you're like it's, it's I, I I'm very grateful to be able to see an outlook on this recently. Um I met a friend called Cody at, at WAPA. I, 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 this is after WAPA, right? So this is only like a couple of months ago, actually. I go to WAPA to rehearse um, sometimes because they've got rooms. So I 
stroll along and I felt this like nostalgia to go. I could hear some bands playing at this place called the Roundhouse. I felt nostalgia to go watch that. And I saw these Whopper students doing their thing on the stage. And it just hit me. I was like, wow, that was me four years ago or three years ago. That was when it was a passion. It wasn't really a profession. And you can see the fire. I wouldn't say necessarily all of them, but you can see the fire in certain people's eyes. You know, some of them are just there because they're not too sure if this is what they want yet. But I, this guy came up to me called Cody and he came up to me and I could tell that he had that fire in his eyes from the passion. And that was me. He's like this reminder to myself of who I was back then. And I'm like this example of a mix of passion and profession. Mm. And I can see just passion there for him. It's really interesting to like not compare, but like just remind each other of like these aspects. He's a great reminder for me of what passion is. Um, because when you start mixing profession into it, yeah, you gotta be careful sometimes, you know. How do you navigate that? Like, how do you navigate avoiding just being a performer? Yeah. Just being a performer. Uh, if you're happy being a performer, that's fine. I love being a performer. I love it. I think that's what I'm passionate about. I love performing live. There you go. I don't do it enough at the moment. Um, I feel like it's not performer. I think it's more like the professional side of this is like building up this image as an artist and like who, what you want to show to the world. And that's like, that can be tiring because I just want to be me. And sometimes when you feel like you have to be too much of you, like that becomes like an exertion of too much. And that's like, prof I don't know. I don't know. Lost if you're, with that. if you're, I'll help you with this. If you're all of a sudden having to do a gig, that's being paid well. Yeah, yeah. So a professional gig. But they give you, they say, Sam, we want you to play this style of music. Then I don't like that. You, yeah. know, you want to show up by, as who you are. But yeah. what if you're, you need to make money? Yeah, some, actually sometimes you do have to do things that you have to compromise sometimes. Yeah, compromise sometimes. That's it. If you're lucky to get to a point where you can complement your passion skills... Yeah. That's the dream. To make money. For me, the dream for me is to be at a part where... Sorry for the interruption, but this show would not be possible without the help of Bright Tank Brewery. They are the major sponsor of the Sevo Show. Huge shout outs to them. Check them out. Great beers, great people, great everything. And uh, well, let's get back to the episode. I don't have to do anything that I don't want to do, but I'm still making a financially free and stable income where I can support myself, the ones I love, my family and give back. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's the awesome. dream. That's awesome. Yeah. So now this dream's coming to fruition mm. and you're doing a lot of promotion. Yeah. You're doing a lot of self-promotion. Yeah. What's been some of the set setbacks in self-promoting? I think the social media grind, man. I feel like... I'm not at a level where like say if you got like a say if you got like a you know John Mayer or these guys I look up to Coldplay you know if Coldplay said oh we're releasing a song they wouldn't have to do too much for people to be excited be like, oh my god whoa for me it's different I'm trying to get myself to that point where I can release a song and people are like whoa uh, so I have to I have to almost like over self promote you know so I feel like you got to be careful, you know. Um, I heard John Mayer say in an interview recently that when he looks back at who he was as a young artist, he's like, man, you didn't have to try so hard, you know. It's, it was, was going to be okay. Sometimes I have to remind myself that. Would you say that that's survivor's bias though? Maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah. You know, like. Who knows? You didn't have to try so hard, like cool now you know what you needed to oh dude done. i'm never gonna stop trying this hard i feel like i'll i'm just confident this is like what i love so yeah i'd be passionate about it i think i just need to balance it sometimes like later after this interview 
I'm going to catch up with a mate and hang out. I think I need more time for friends and family. That's so important. That's yeah. super important. That's yeah. super important. You mentioned London before. Yeah. Uh, international taste and success. Brother, yeah. What was, what was London like? What oh, did you was, have to do? That was cool. That was cool. That was like amazing. I had literally got flown out internationally, picked up in like this fancy chauffeur. This guy had like a suit on with my name on his iPad at the airport. And he, then he put me in a Tesla, but it wasn't just a normal Tesla. This thing was like, the interior was like white, spotless leather. It was like the fanciest Tesla I've ever been in. Then he drove me to my hotel, which was like the fanciest hotel I've ever stayed in. Everything was like looked after. It was for, sorry, I'm, I gotta, it was for the Bob Marley movie, which is crazy. Uh, we did a short documentary to help promote the film. And I worked with like people like J.P. Cooper, you know, maybe we're perfect strangers, maybe it's not forever. You know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, huge artist and f a huge human being too. Uh, I love that guy. We've become, we've become mates and, you know, had a good time. But uh, look, I met so many cool artists from that and lifelong friends now. From all around the world, they flew out six artists. Uh, I was one, the only one from Australia. Uh, and we went together, had a session in the studio, just literally jamming Bob Marley music, appreciating the movie and you're hanging out. And that was like, that was like, that felt like star treatment, dude. That was crazy. Like after we finished that project, um, we went out for dinner. I don't know if I sh should be saying this, but they were just like, order whatever you want, order whatever you want. And they had like this paella, which was like 90 euros, like 90 pounds. And I was like, I don't want to touch this stuff. Like, this is expensive. I had this dinner and ended up like the bill was just like crazy. But like, it was a crazy time. Like I was, I'm forever grateful for the people that put that together and chose me to come and be a part of that. I was mind blown. Like, I, I still don't believe that. I, I kept asking them, like, how do you find me? Like, why me? Why do you choose me? Why? I'll never know for sure, but that experience was crazy. That opened up so many doors. Like I obviously JP like as a friend now and he's been a cool person to sit down. I feel like he to me is what I am to Cody, for instance. You know, he's a reminder to me of something and like my future and I'm a reminder of his youth maybe. Sat down, he showed me his album coming up and yeah, he's coming to Australia soon, so we'll hang out. But cool. that was crazy. Uh, and, you know, obviously going to London made me go all around Europe. I went busking all around Europe. It was funny because I went from like this star treatment to like busking and then staying in hostels in Europe. <laughs> so it was funny. So, you know, it's just, you know, you got to humble yourself. But that was amazing. Oh, I'm forever grateful for that. that. That was my first taste of international sort of like music that's awesome that was man. phenomenal dude and you'd be able you were able to adapt back to the the real world yeah yeah hostel that's, that's living that's fun that's yeah. right yeah we we went around europe i i took took my i took my guitar around europe and this in my backpack that's all i had a little backpack and a duffel bag went busking if i was hungry if we were like oh let's go out for dinner i just busk for half an hour make like 30 euros and then go out for dinner yeah that's sick that's i love you it did. you know what if nothing works out i'm just gonna do that that's so cool, yeah. man. That's so cool. Yeah. So back to Perth. Yeah. Your, your hometown. The hometown, man. And the yeah. meaning of it. Oh, it's, it's grown on me. How it's much of it is in your music? I mean, my music is inspired by the situations that I go through in life, the people I meet. I don't know how much of it's in my music. I think it's more about how much of it is in me, you know. Yeah. Very proud of it. I won't lie. There is one part of Perth that, well, not Perth, but I think Australia as a, as a whole. Yeah. One part of Australia as a whole is that I feel like there is a lot of tall poppy syndrome. Oh, mate. Ingrained Absolutely. in the culture. Absolutely. And I'm a bit, I'm a bit ashamed of that because, dude, Perth is the most comfortable. <laughs> this is a compliment. Perth is the most comfortable safest city in the world we're so family orientated so yeah i do see sometimes when someone rises up with something it's it can be dangerous a bit mm -hmm. but that's right we're not going to focus on that what i'm going to focus on is that we literally live in the best city in the world and i feel like 
I'm a huge Jack Harlow fan. <laughs> and he's like so – he's got so much hometown proud, pride about Kentucky, like where he comes from, Louisville. You're the same. And like I'm the same, man. You know what? I want to I wanna, I wanna put us on the map. Like I know that people have done that before, but I really want to – I want to – when I'm at that level that I dream of, I want to be like, oh, Sam McGowan. He came from like – literally the most isolated city in the world like yeah. he's he's come from there and he's come he's risen up with his people you know like i've got to show by the time this comes out it would have already happened but i've got to show this sunday and i'm just so excited oh, to, I better race him better oh, better release it before the show. i'm so excited <laughs> like to so it's like qt show, yeah qt hotel on the rooftop on the rooftop they've never done a show on the rooftop there before so why like, why you and how did you get it happening at at the QT? Yeah. Oh, so okay. If she's watching this, that's all right. <laughs> we're we're cool. But I wrote hotel rooms about a girl that I had a thing with. Uh, I wrote hotel rooms in. I wrote hotel rooms. Uh, okay, one second. I just went. I'm just getting. I'm melting right now. So I wrote. I was seeing a girl for a while. We stayed at QT Hotel one night. Yeah. I wrote a song in QT about her next to her. We are chilling. Anyway, we had a thing. She kind of like, she totally like kind of ghosted me and left Europe. Oh, no. It's pretty funny. Uh, I literally kind of drove across Australia like one month earlier than what I should have done with hopes of hanging, you know. That went through the window. <laughs> that was funny. Um so I've learned that's a lesson. But then I wrote the song Hotel Rooms about that experience that I went through of, I guess, like a situationship. So then I ended up being like, stuff it. I'm going to relive every part of that moment so I can try and be authentic to my audience with this song. So I ended up writing the song about Hotel Rooms, QT. Ended up hitting them up, being like, hey, guys, can we film a music video here? We filmed the music video at QT. And then I was like, stuff it. Can we do a show at QT? We did it. We're doing a show at QT. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. So poor, this poor girl has to relive everything and see it all. It's kind of creepy of me, but I just, I'm having fun with it. It's fun. But um, yeah, it's, to my knowledge, I think we're setting the highest live band show history elevation in Perth ever. Yeah. Wow. They're the highest bar in, highest rooftop bar in Perth. Wow. So they've never done a, a live band show there before. So. Well, what a time. There we go. So, oh, I'm so, so man, stoked. the hometown. Perth love, man. I love Mate, you Perth. sold it to me. You already invited me to, yeah, on yeah. Sunday. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll convince yeah, the missus. Yeah, come along. Come I'll along convince if you the want. Yeah, yeah. No pressure, but it'll be fun. So that's, yeah, Perth, huge. It's like a tattoo on my brain, dude. Like I want to I wanna show people how important this place means to me, you know, because – I feel like if you can come from nothing to something, that's the coolest thing ever. Like, I mean, I was very fortunate to have a supportive family when I grew up. I wouldn't say we have much money like or anything like that. We've had to work really hard for what we have, but still I had a roof over my head. But I guess my nothing to something is Perth. Like Perth, I wouldn't say Perth is nothing, but Perth is so isolated. We're so far from everything. Yeah. And to one day, it's not like LA Hollywood. Like, hey, nah. you're here. Let's uh, to do one stuff. day, like, hopefully, play like a sold out crowd at you know, at the Garden, like you know, or you know, Red Rocks, and be like, yo, we came from Perth. Yeah, like that is huge, and that's what I want to do for this city, you know. And then come back here and play a show at the city and be like, I, got, I love you guys the most. Yeah. 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 All right, I've got some quick fire questions before yep. we go. What's the one song you would want to be most remembered by? One of your songs. I want my hit to be something that I don't have to like scream at the top of my lungs. Like, you know how like John Mayer is like waiting on the world to change? Or like Benson Boone is like beautiful things. Like, yeah. I want my hit to be something that, you know, I could probably play late at night and just cruise with. But who knows? I, I, don't, I don't have, I don't have control over that. That's you guys. So. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Um, if you can go back in time and give your rookie self... One piece of advice, what would it be? Just try to savor every moment and like just cherish it, give it a kiss on the cheek and then like, but keep moving 
but don't rush. Like if just look at it and take your time because time is such an important gift. Like you, you can never get it back. That's the most valuable currency. It's non-refundable. No. What would make more you uh, what would make you more nervous playing to five people or five thousand people? Uh, five people. Why is that? Straight up. So intimate. Yeah. Intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. Intimate. Five people. What's even more nervous is sometimes even playing to myself. Like, yeah. Mm. It's, I don't know, but five people. Yeah. A bit of social media now. What are some of the biggest challenges you face when trying to promote your music and grow your fan base? Oh, that's a good one. Biggest challenge is trying to grow my family. Doing it, making sure that everything I do is authentic. And like, yeah, I think I think balancing what I want to do and what I know, know is going to work. Yeah. Cool. If you can go on tour with two current bands. Yeah, bands. I'm going to say solo artists too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, artists, who would they be? Whoa. Oh. Definitely, it's always like I've said this guy so many times, John Mayer. Yeah, it's the reason why I started doing music. So, yeah, John. Uh, hoof. Dean Lewis is coming to town soon, so I'm just gonna say that's gonna be like my side answer, Dean, because like he is also an inspiration to me. But then I'm gonna say Coldplay too. So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna like properly support them, you know, not just outside the stadium. I've got one more question yeah. and then I want to hear you sing. Yeah, okay. Intimate w- on one. Mm-hmm. Do you have what it takes? Four. To go to international John Mayer sort of style. Yeah, bro, of course. Yeah. I think I have that belief. I have that belief in myself. It's now, I have that belief in myself. It's just now like convincing people that they should believe it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The phone's ringing. You are so. picking the phone up and you're talking to your 20-year from yeah. now self. Yeah. What are you asking, Sam McGovern? Oh, I like total time capsule stuff. Yeah. What are you asking him? Uh, what do you want to know? What do I want to What do you want to like? What is, it I... a, is it a spoiler? Is it advice? Is it what – what are you asking him? What am I asking him? Yeah. Go on, put it up. I think it's like... Talk to him, talk to him, talk oh to him. Oh my God, this is scary. Give him, give him, give him your uh, question. Just, 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 just... You have to I, actually do I, it. You I, have to actually right do now, it. I'm the reflection. I'm the reflection. I'm the reflection right now of your youth and you need to use that, you know. Like just never... You're as old as you feel, so stay young, you know. No, no, you're talking to your 20-year older self. Oh, I'm talking to him. Yeah. Yeah, I am talking to him. I'm saying just you need to always Okay. You need to keep that fire in you, you know, shelter it. You know, shelter it, hold on to it. So you're giving your twenty year older self advice? Yeah. I need to tell myself that, you know How old are you now? I'm twenty twenty four. Twenty four. So yeah. you're giving your forty four year old self a bit of a pep talk. Yeah. Well I just keep doing you, man. Just just literally just Tell keep, him, tell him, tell him. He needs yeah, to hear it. Keep doing you. I love like it. just keep doing you and just keep being who Sam is. I don't know what I'm going to be passionate about when I'm 44, but I hope what I'm passionate about when I'm 44, I'm doing it, yeah. you know, wherever that is. And, uh, you know, all these dreams that you, all these dreams that... Put, 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 put it put, on the put phone. It on. Like, like actually have the conversation. Hey, Sammy, what's happening? <laughs> so you're 44 now. Judging from your current mindset, you're probably still going to be single and you probably <laughs> won't have kids yet because... You're too obsessed with guitars. You've got an addiction. You've bought too many. Um, so late at night when you're lonely, just caress that neck instead. But that's all right. I hope you've achieved everything you want because you can. You can. You can. St- if you still haven't, you still can. Like right now, like I know it's okay. You can. You've got. Um, you probably haven't got long left to live. <laughs> um, so you better get off. You stop watching this like in ten seconds. Get off your ass. And do what you need to do. Never give up because I don't. You shouldn't. Um, I hope that you've met the people you want. I don't know. Just do it with love always. 
Never do anything you don't want to do. And don't be scared to, to tell people to piss off sometimes. I don't know. Just be confident with everything you do. And yeah, do it for love. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. That's perfect, man. Just, uh, yeah, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> love yourself. Love yeah. it. All right. Let's uh, have a look at the oh, uh, yeah. guitar. Tell me about, do you have, does it have a name? This one does. Okay. I don't, um, I feel like I got to be fearless here. It's called Sarah. Okay. But there's a reason why it's called Sarah. Because Sarah's kind of, a, I'm sorry if they've, I'm, I hope I don't date a Sarah in my future. Because <laughs> Sarah is kind of a boring name for me. I okay. feel like. I kind of like like Francesca. Or like okay. Something um, like Olivia. Like something that makes you like exotic. tasty. It's exotic. <laughs> so Sarah for me, I don't know. It's a, it's it's all right, but it's because it's got a last name. It's called Sarah, and its last name is called Nader. Sarah Nader. Oh. Oh. And on that note, got Sarah, me. Got me. I'm gonna serenade you. Here's some flowers. Oh yes. There you go. That's what I mean. Yeah. Mm, Straight enough. home pick from my garden. Oh, that's great. One yeah. in your pocket too. Yeah. I'd, oh, actually, yeah. I forgot about that one. All right. Have you have you ever done a podcast recording of your hotel rooms or yet? No, but I I kind of I reckon I should play another song. Oh, a different song. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll play. I'll play. Um. Um. Oh. Oh no! Need some need some tuning. Need some tuning. You gotta tune it up. Um, As we wait for uh, Sam to tune the guitar Oh, it's very out of tune He's got his uh, phone tuner going <laughs> um, Yeah, comments Let us know what you thought about the conversation We're going to end it at the end of the song um, It's been a pleasure having Sam on again And apologies to not getting the original video That's up That's alright, we, did, we did, we'll never know what we said there I will somehow randomly find it And we'll, there'll be a contrast sort of comparison It'd be so interesting It'd be sick I'm probably going to look back on it and be like Damn, you were so depressed so <laughs> There is a different tune here Yeah, um, different tune With Sam I He's, think by the time this You're glowing more I think by the time this episode's out I would already be starting to tease this song this could be the next one, maybe. This is a live debut. Yeah. All right. I'm going to put my mic onto your guitar, and that yeah. can be your vocal mic. Cool. Oh, the chair's moved. So this is that song that I told you I wrote in QT. So it's tight. It's all connected, man. This is the one I, I wrote in QT. Like, and the start, oh, I'm so excited for when it comes out. The start of the song, the recorded version, that giggle and that laugh and that talking was literally from the voice recording of when I was writing it next to her. Nice. So that, that is, it's, it's the most authentic thing you can ever get. So right. it literally puts you in the room. How long do you want? Just a little part? what we're going to do. Do the blinds close, we don't need no light, no. It's a sign, it's a sense to guide us. Fingertips miss, second time I charm, no. Bodies move, dancing in the way that you touch me. It's got me feeling something. The moment our lips meet No stopping us now Do I want it? Yes, I do I say I feel it So do you Undercovers me And you making love Do I want it? Yes, I do I say I feel it So do you Undercovers me And you making love That's what we're gonna do here That's what we're gonna do yeah. It's a little part I lost my voice a week ago So that's actually the first time I sung for a while, man um, But yeah Jesus Pull the blast, we don't need no light, no 
Fingertips to sand, use our senses to guide us. Fingertips miss, second time I charm. Yeah, that was like that was like clogged up Sam McGovern. So there you go. That was I good. don't mind. That's good. It'd be fine. I, right now I'm like, oh, that was average. But look, I'll look back on it. It'll be One fine. day the hardcore Sam McGovern fans will be like, do you remember that recording he did at Sev's studio that one time? That mm-hmm. one song that I was like, oh my God, I love that song. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. actually, it's super funny. Like in the recording, it's like. Well, he's like going to bring it up. He's going to bring it up. In the recording, it's like this. Three. It's so funny. Oh. Anyway, that's sick. It's cool, man. That's sick. Yeah, that's, I'm that's excited. The recorder. That was the wish version, but it was acoustic <laughs> just then. But that's right. We're recovering. We, I haven't talked because we got the show this weekend, um, so I haven't been talking at all. So after this, I'll, I'll shut the vocals. Yeah, off. chill, chill yeah, for a bit, guys. Yeah, brother. Absolute pleasure to have Sam on, and I'm looking forward to having this career of yours blossom. <laughs> Uh, bigger than a lavender Yes But lavender is nice But lavender is very yeah. nice Childhood memories The outro of Spongebob now As I'm outroing everyone As always guys Good thanks Follow Sam on all the socials in the description And I'll see you under the sea